Our Pets for Life program provides veterinary and pet care assistance to people who love their pets but don't have access to resources, especially veterinary care. Bridging the gap in services prevents thousands of animals from unnecessarily entering the sheltering system. It's empowering communities to care for the animals they love and providing missing opportunities that exist in other areas. Lifeline's mission is to end the euthanasia of healthy and treatable animals in the shelter. Along the way, we learn to look at every piece of the puzzle and focus on root causes for animals entering the shelter. While we are doing everything to get animals out of the shelter every day, we want to stop them from ending up there in the first place. And our Pets for Life program has a major role in doing just that. Pets for Life is the critical link between what happens in the community and what happens in the shelter. If we can support the community, then we're supporting the animals. The animals can stay with the people who love them and they don't end up in our system. I started out as a client with Pets for Life and now I'm working there. I think I'm making a difference because we're able to help people that are in underserved communities and don't have the services that a lot of other communities have. Pets for Life is an innovative program that helps to address the lack of resources and accessibility for pets and people in our focus communities. In our communities in Pets for Life, 37% of our clients live below the poverty level. We deal with systemic and generational poverty. We firmly believe that everybody's lives can be enhanced by owning a pet, and if they choose to own a pet, we should be able to help support them in everything to make their pets happy and healthy. The Pets for Life groundbreaking approach includes opening doors and building relationships using positive engagement in the community, and overall it helps provide better quality of life for the pets and people who love them. What makes our program most successful is our community outreach. We go door to door, knocking on people's doors and meeting people where they're at, saying hello, sitting on porches, talking about their pets. We provide everything free for our clients to help keep their pets in the homes where they're loved. This includes free transportation, we provide free spay-neuter appointments, free microchipping, free vet care appointments when their animal is sick, as well as any pet care supplies such as dog houses, runners to help get their dogs off the chain, and then most importantly, any kind of resource for information and just knowledge about taking care of their pets. This all together helps to keep pets out of the shelter and in homes that they love. We chose our Pets for Life community based on several factors. The first factor is the average household income. We also chose our community based on the animal care resources, or lack thereof. There is only one vet in a 40 square mile radius. There are also no pet stores, no pet care resources, or anything where they can positively be engaged in pet welfare. Our focus area also coincides with our shelter statistics. Our community happens to be where the highest number of stray animals are called about, where the highest number of citations are issued by the officers for things such as tethering or lack of proper sheltering. It also happens to be where the largest portion of animal pickups occur by our animal control officers. Altogether, these are the reasons why this community has the highest need and why it's our Pets for Life area. As long as poverty exists, there will be a need for subsidized services, including spay-neuter, general wellness care, supplies, and even support for adoptions. There is a critical need for community-based owner support programs. Investment in preventative programming is less stressful for pets. They get to stay in the homes with families that love them instead of a stressful shelter environment. The average cost per pet served through the Pet for Life program is less than $100. The average cost of sheltering an animal is around $500. Simple math shows the cost of providing medical care in the home is already cheaper than medical treatment plus rehoming. 90% of Pets for Life pets were unaltered because of lack of access to affordable care. 84% had not even seen a veterinarian. By building relationships, and offering free transport and surgeries at our spay and neuter clinic, 93% of the clients that agree to spay and neuter follow through. This is a people problem. We need to support the pets and the people that love them. Once we have developed the relationships and gained the trust of clients in our community, they ultimately come back and sign up for our free services such as spay and neuter. 
This keeps our pets happy and healthy in the homes and out of the shelters. When you meet people who love their animals but just don't have the resources, and you see how easy it is to provide that for them, you feel compelled to do that work. All it takes is one person to help a whole community help each other. We're really grateful to Maddie's Fund for helping us make this resource available in our community. There are several keys to becoming a successful program. The number one factor is you have to have a great team. They need to be open-minded, compassionate, non-judgmental, and not afraid to knock on doors and meet people where they are. What I love about my job is it gives me the opportunity to give back to the community what was actually given to me. Great partners are another key to a successful program. Partners such as animal control agencies, clinics, spay-neuter clinics in your area, food banks for both people and their pets, and any community programs that you can use to refer folks to. Pets for Life is a useful tool for me as an animal control officer to uh, give people resources and access to things that they need to take care of their pets. Another key factor is consistency. You have to be in the neighborhood all the time. You have to gain the trust of clients so they know that you are there and you're not a fly-by-night program. Being their long-term and lifelong resource is the key. A final key ingredient to having a successful program is finding the right donors who love Pets for Life and what you're doing. In order to connect donors to what happens in our community and make them want to support our program, you have to share positive stories, share great pictures, include the people with their pets, showing the love that they have and how you were able to help enhance their relationship and make their pets happier and healthier. Sharing these stories helps to gain a lot of support. Thanks to Maddie's Fund, we've been able to provide support for six months worth of services in our Pets for Life program, including spay neuter, vet care, dog houses, and runners. We have been able to perform over 1,000 spay neuter surgeries, and about 1,400 clients and over 2,100 pets are happier and healthier. Thanks, Maddie's Fund. Our aha moment occurred when we delved beyond traditional community outreach efforts like our healthy pet events and our vaccine clinics and we touched community members at home. This door-to-door -door approach was truly a paradigm shift. The second part of the equation is shifting the paradigm around dog catchers. Our animal control officers aren't there to pick up strays only. They're also there to build community relationships and help people care for their pets and they are keeping pets and neighborhoods safer. Pets for Life not only generates positive outcomes for people in the community and their pets, but on a larger level, the program is creating a shift in animal welfare. We are focusing on inclusivity, community, compassion, proactivity, and addressing critical issues that affect millions of people living at or below the poverty level. Pets for Life is changing these outcomes and saving lives. Thank you, Maddie's Fund, for making our Pets for Life program even more successful.